Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the four tissues of the body. So let's get into it here. The four tissues of the body. So first off, what is a tissue? Well, we talked about cells in the past, and of course a cell is our basic unit of life, right? It has typically a nucleus in it with DNA inside, and then cytoplasm with organelles. That's our basic unit, and then we take a group of similar cells with a you know specialized function and we call them a tissue okay so what are the four tissues of the body we'll write them right here epithelium connective tissue nervous tissue and muscle so these are the four tissues of the body which means they, each of these is going to have a, a similar looking cell, okay? And, and each one is gonna be distinct from the next. And they are gonna have a, a, a specific function. So epithelium, when, you know, if you look at epithelium under a microscope, uh, it's gonna look very distinct. And we'll talk about some of these you know, differences uh, here in a minute. We'll classify them, which is also one of the trickier things. Um, but when you look at epithelium under a microscope, it's, it's very distinct, and of course it has a specific function uh, for the body. Um, same with connective. It's going to look very different than epithelium and have, of course, uh, a different role in the body. And then same with nerve and muscle, which really these two are very different from the first two. Okay, and so we'll talk about these. Real quick, we can mention epithelium. The bottom line for epithelium is that it covers the body and protects. Um, connective is gonna connect and support organs. Okay, connect and support. Of course, nervous tissue is going to communicate, right? It's our communication tissue for the body. And of course, muscle is there for movement. So very different functions and, of course, very different looking uh, tissues. And that's why we have these, of course, as their own classification. Every single uh, tissue in the body um, is going to fall under one of these four main categories of tissue. So we'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, you know, when we look at epithelium, we can talk about some of the differences here. Uh, nerve and muscle, you know, very distinct. Uh, very specialized. We actually call nerve and muscle tissue excitable tissues because we, we, we stimulate nerve, we stimulate muscle, and that they do something, right? Nerves send signals, nervous tissues send signals, muscles, of course, contract. So these are both excitable tissues. Um, epithelium and connective, I want to say some differences about these. The, 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 the big difference here, visibly, with epithelium and connective. Epithelium is gonna have very tightly packed cells. When you look at epithelium under a microscope, the cells are very tightly packed. There's really no visible space outside the cell. So the area often referred to as the extracellular matrix is, is, is really hardly visible, right? And each of these would have you know, nuclei. Uh, very, very uh, little to no extracellular matrix Whereas connective tissue is going to have large gaps outside the cell and very large amounts or spaces within the extracellular matrix. Okay, and of course we're going to see other things in connective tissue, uh, specifically certain types of connective tissue, uh, like the fibrous, where we're going to see fibers, visible fibers running through the uh, extracellular matrix. So very different looking tissues, and again, very different with the nerve and muscle. So let's do this. Let's, um, we talked about some of the basic functions we always remember for each of these four types. Let's categorize them a little bit and real quickly we'll talk about uh, some of the differences. Now under epithelium, we'll just kind of categorize these. We, we have really two columns. We will have a simple column and we'll have a stratified column, okay? Simple just means that we have one row of cells, okay, all those cells touch the basement membrane, okay, which by definition makes it one row, 
Okay, so that's going to be one column. We're going to have uh, four types of simple epithelium, and then we're going to also have four types of stratified. Stratified just means two or more layers, so it's a multi-layered uh, type of epithelium where the bottom row touches the basement membrane, but then this, the, 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 the more superficial rows, you know, as, as you work your way out, do not touch the basement membrane. Okay, so we're going to have four here as well. So each one of these is going to begin with the word simple. Okay, so we're going to have simple, if you think about it, we're going to have simple, I'll just abbreviate it here, simple squamous, simple cuboidal, and simple columnar, and then we're going to have one that's unique, and it's called pseudo-stratified columnar. Okay, so all these would be end in the word epithelium, right? So simple squamous epithelium, simple cuboidal epithelium, pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. So these are all single row layer cells, okay? Squamous simply means flat. We see simple squamous. Uh, probably one of the key areas to remember about simple squamous is that you see it in the inner wall, what we call the endothelium of the heart, right? We also see it in the inner wall, inner wall of blood vessels. This uh, layer is in contact with blood. Um, simple cuboidal, we see uh, you know, mammary glands, thyroid, things like that. Simple columnar, we see in the GI tract, so I'll just mention that. Uh, some of these cells, like simple columnar, that produce mucus, does the GI tract produces mucus. Uh, some of these cells, like this one, have goblet cells, okay, if they produce mucus. And just to let you know, a goblet cell basically is a wine glass shaped cell which produces mucus. And then this last one is unique pseudostratified columnar epithelium. We see this primarily in the respiratory system. Respiratory system also makes mucus, so we'll see goblet cells in here as well. Okay, but this is false stratified. So it's a single layer of cells, but has a slightly stratified appearance, even though it's not stratified. Okay, so keep that in mind. Come over here to the stratified sign. You've got uh, stratified squamous, okay, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar, and one more unique one transitional epithelium, okay? So stratified cuboidal, stratified squamous, this is probably uh, one of the most important ones to remember. It is the most widespread of all of the epithelial tissues. Why? Because this is what your epidermis is made of, right? And the epidermis is your outer layer of skin. So obviously the epidermis is very widespread. So that is uh, what stratified squamous uh, is going to be, and then you've got some others. Um, I'm not going to really get into these too much, especially stratified columnar because it's actually considered rare. But I do want to talk about transitional epithelium for a minute. This is seen primarily in the urinary tract, and the neat thing about this is it goes from round to flat. Okay, so in the urinary tract, think about it, the ureter and the bladder, they stretch. So when the bladder is really full and it's stretched out, what do these cells look like? They're going to look more flat. When the bladder is empty and, and, and the tissue is relaxed, it's going to look more round. So that's a special one as well. It is stratified, multi-layered. Okay, so that's a really, really fast rundown on simple and stratified epithelium. Now, Let's run to the connective real fast. Connective, <clears throat> this is actually the biggest category. First type of connective that we're gonna talk about is gonna be the fibrous connective tissue, okay? And the fibrous, the unique thing about fibrous connective tissue is that it has fibers in it. Collagen or collagenous fibers, elastic and reticular fibers. All three of those actually contain collagen, okay? Really tough protein. That actually makes connective tissue really tough. Good at supporting and connecting underlying structures in the body. Uh, the collagen is really being the, 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 the densest and toughest of them all. But that's the unique thing about fibrous connective tissue. You see it all throughout the body. 
We'll talk about some of those areas real briefly. Um, but we actually have uh, some, some subtypes of the fibrous. And the way we're going to classify this, and this is the one that can get a little confusing, we're going to classify it into loose and dense. And under loose, we have areolar and reticular. And under dense, we have regular and irregular. Okay? So we really have loose fibrous connective tissue, dense fibrous connective tissue, and then some other subtypes. We call it loose because, again, under a microscope, it, it, it's... It's much more open. The, the space outside the cells, that extracellular matrix, is, it has more, more space in it or gaps in it versus the dense, which looks just like it says. It's, it's much, the, the cells and tissues and fibers are much more densely packed. So areola in particular uh, would be the two types of uh, loose, okay? And then we have under the dense, the regular, dense regular and dense irregular. I'm not going to talk about too much of this uh, to kind of keep our video as short as possible, but I will say this, your tendons and ligaments fall under the dense regular connective tissue. Okay, so very ordered fashion to this type of tissue. Um, so just remember that dense regular is going to be what makes up your tendons and ligaments both the same tissue type. I'll mention this too, dense irregular is the connective tissue, the type of connective tissue found under epidermis. So you've got epidermis, which we said a few minutes ago was stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, under that would be what we call dermis, which is connective tissue, and it's specifically the dense irregular. So I'll just mention that. But that's the fibers. Again, what's unique about all fibers, it has visible fibers. Okay, made of collagen. So then we go to adipose. Okay, adipose is fat, and that is considered a connective tissue, okay, for energy storage, for cushion, and for insulation. Then we go to cartilage, and the one thing I'll say that's unique about cartilage, we're going to talk about the three types here is that in general, connective tissue has lots of blood vessels in it. When you look at uh, the connective tissue under the epidermis, which again we call the dermis, made of this dense irregular, it's uh, full of blood vessels. And you look at, you know, um, whether it be adipose, it's full of blood vessels. We'll talk about bone in a minute, full of blood vessels. Cartilage has no blood vessels. So that's one of the unique things about cartilage. It's the only connective tissue without blood vessels, okay? Something else I'll mention about epithelium that's unique is no epithelium. All eight that we talked about have no blood vessels. So you can remember uh, two tissues that have no blood vessels. Epithelium, all epithelium, and cartilage. Okay? The cartilages we're going to talk about are going to be hyaline, elastic, and fibro cartilage. Okay? And again, we're going to go through these quickly. Elastic, I'll just mention real fast, is going to be the cartilage you find, for instance, in your ear, very flexible. Hyaline is seen throughout the body. It is going to be the primary precursor to all bone tissue. So when we're forming in the womb, you know, our skeleton is developing, it starts out as hyaline cartilage and then ossifies or hardens into bone tissue. So cartilage is our early uh, model so to speak, for bone, okay? Uh, we see hyaline in growth plates then. Uh, we see it in uh, the, the uh, costal cartilages uh, that attach the ribs to the sternum. Trachea is made of hyaline cartilage. You see it throughout the body. Fibrocartilage, on the other hand, and I'll say this about hyaline, it is clear and it's smooth and glassy. Fibrocartilage is dense, coarse, and tough. That's the big difference between these two. And of course, like we said, elastic is flexible. Fibrocartilage is very dense. We're gonna see that in the invertebral disc to the spine for shock absorption. We're gonna see it in the meniscus of the knees. Uh, we we'll even see it in the TMJ joint, the temporomandibular joint, okay? We see it in the pubic symphysis. 
So fiber cartilage is much denser and coarser and tougher. Okay. Now uh, after cartilage, you talk about bone. We mentioned that just a minute ago. Uh, and the two types of bone are spongy and compact. You know, spongy's basically got ho hollowness to it. Compact is denser. Uh, and then lastly is blood. Blood is a fluid connective tissue. And think about it, there's two parts to blood. There's, there's the plasma, which is liquid, and then the formed elements, which are cells. At least red blood cells or white blood cells are cells. Platelets are a cell fragment. So blood is our last of the connective tissues. So this is a big uh, category. So keep that in mind as you're studying this and classifying or categorizing all these connective has quite a bit under it. Okay, so that's the quick rundown on connective. Real quick, we'll do a quick rundown on nervous tissue. <clears throat> nervous is gonna be easy and short. We've done a lot of videos on nerve uh, tissue and on the nervous system, but really we're just gonna talk about the basics here and there's really two basic parts to nerve tissue, okay? You either have the neuron or you have the neuroglia. And those are your two basic parts. The neuron basically sends signals, okay? It's responsible for sending signals. The neuroglia, which actually outnumber the neurons, the neuroglia protect and assist the neuron. They're the housekeepers for the nervous system. So for the nervous system to uh, function properly, you need both, okay? But I guess the all the glory goes to the neuron because it's the... the, the the main one sending the signals. So that's really what we're going to say about nervous tissue. It will come down here to muscle tissue. Most of you guys are probably already familiar. We've got skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. Those are our three types of muscle tissue. Now again, muscle tissue is unique because it contracts. Now some differences between these we refer to skeletal muscle as somatic muscle, okay? It's the muscle of the body, right? It's going to move our bodies. It is the only muscle that is voluntary, okay? We're giving conscious thought to the movements of skeletal muscle. It has multiple nuclei, and one of the special things about it is that it's striated. Under a microscope, it has visible light and dark bands, which gives it a striped or striated appearance. And we come in here to cardiac and smooth, we frequently refer to these as visceral muscle. Okay, visceral refers to the organs. This is organ muscle. Now the difference between the two is that cardiac is only found in one place, one place only, and that is the heart. The heart muscle is cardiac, period. That's it. Very specialized muscle. It fires on its own, so it's involuntary. And of course it has a single nucleus and it actually is striated. Uh, the striations to me aren't as vibrant and visible as skeletal muscle, but they do exist. There are striations, okay? Smooth muscle gets its name because it's just that. It's smooth, it has no striations to it. And basically all other organs in the body except the heart contain smooth muscle. One of the unique things I'll mention about smooth too is that it actually is capable of mitosis, so it can regenerate. Cardiac and smooth do not undergo mitosis, they cannot regenerate. Somebody has a heart attack, cardiac muscle, uh, to use that example, right? Those cardiac muscle cells die, they will not come back, they're basically filled in with scar tissue. Okay, smooth muscle is capable of regeneration. So smooth muscle has a single nucleus, okay? And again, it's involuntary. So those are the big uh, categories here for tissues. Uh, we'll do another video on membranes, so be looking for that. It's just a different way to categorize things. We'll talk about the glands of the body and some of the other things down the road. But for now, I hope this helps. Till next time, good luck and good studying.